What's up everyone? Today we have a chipper, shredder, yeah, and the problem is this pull cord is not retracting. In addition to that, I don't know if it runs. This is probably one of, or even possibly the first time on this channel that we see this style of carb. They're not really well known for failing or having problems, except for leaking. Leaking is a pretty common occurrence for them. The tank is dry, so maybe it leaked it all out? Don't know. Having said that, usually in order to get this uh, recoil figured out, we're going to have to take off this whole cover. But if you look on here, this one has screws, so that's good. I think I'm going to take the screws out and we'll take a look at the cover and see what's going on because it's not very happy. So as soon as I took it off, took it off, excuse me, um, it retracted. So the recoil is not the problem. I didn't notice that there was a clutch in here, but there's a clutch. Um, more likely or not, that thing just goobered up. We're going to take out these quarter inch screws, take everything off, and then we'll take a look inside there and see what's going on. Well, hold on there. Over 90% of you, according to YouTube, are not subs currently subscribed. You're watching this video, but you're currently not subscribed. So I'm going to welcome you to subscribe at the end if this helped you out. I work on a lot of machines, so maybe the machine you're watching is going to be something you own. But who knows? Maybe you own a generator, a pressure washer, a big mower, a chainsaw, a variety of things. The only way to know if I'm going to fix it in the future is by subscribing. And maybe I get to the one that you own and can help you out then too. So I welcome you to subscribe. Put a thumbs up if it does help you out. Back to your normal video. So, Briggs & Stratton makes this clutch removal tool. It's actually very useful for a situation like this because this is screwed onto the shaft. And if you don't have it, it's gonna be a lot more difficult. This flywheel is cast iron, so it's pretty stout. But if you didn't have this, you'd have to find a way to either lock the cylinder up with like rope, shove a screwdriver through one of these fins. That's a little dangerous, especially if it's an aluminum one. Um, but with this, you just need a impact. It comes right off. I don't remember how much that is. I feel like it's like 20, 30 bucks. And it seems like something you don't ever need to use or worry about, but trust me, it can save you. So now that we have this off, let's go ahead and take a look at the inside. The shaft, eh, it's a little dirty, not too bad. I don't think I'll just take a little brake cleaner and towel wipe that off, make sure it's nice and shiny. But this is probably our main problem. So we need to take off this top part, our plate. A lot of times, you can find a place where it's starting to lift up. Oh, there we go. Perfect. It came right off. Usually it doesn't do that. Hmm. Yeah, this actually is really clean. So inside there's ball bearings, and we just need to get that cleaned out. Uh, if this is really bad, like really rusty, there's, they make these little tiny uh, brushes for like Dremels and they work amazing when getting into tiny little places like this. This is a well used one and I will probably put a pair of safety glasses and I'll just go in there and I'll get that nice and clean. Do that off camera though. It's boring. Now, we need to make sure inside of here is clean as well. So I'm going to do the exact same thing with the Dremel. Just kind of shove it through there. But basically, you just want to make everything look nice and clean and new. So I'm going to spend a little time, do a little cleaning, and we'll be back. Oh, man, it's cold outside. It's like 23 degrees or something ridiculous. It always seems to work out that way when all year it's like pretty nice. And you're like, oh, that's okay. I don't need to move to a warm climate. And then all of a sudden you get like a week like this, snow on the ground. I'm sure everyone that lives in a much colder place is just laughing right now, but the Pacific Northwest, we don't get a whole lot of that nonsense. And there's a reason why I live here, because of that reason. So after a little bit of cleaning, it's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty good. We're looking pretty splendid. 
there was a washer right there. We want to make sure we put that washer back. So how this works is these old ball bearings, when the engine is not running, will kind of wedge themselves onto this little cog. And that will allow you to pull the engine over. Now when the engine starts running, spread. Mm -hmm. Wet the towel a little bit more. Let's give this a good wiping. This actually really wasn't bad. And this section itself isn't going to potentially not cause the problem that we are having. But it can cause a problem of them not catching. They get stuck on the outside and you'll, you can't actually turn anything. You'll just be pulling on the handle and nothing will actually catch. That can get quite aggravating. There we go. And that's it. I'm going to press this on a little bit more with the vise so it kind of closes that gap. Get it installed. I already cleaned the shaft. Same thing, that's where a lot of this dirt came from, from this towel. And we'll go ahead and put that back on. Now here's the thing. You can put a little bit of oil in here when it's on, or even on the shaft before you install it. You just want to make sure it's a little bit, like very, very minimal. It needs to be lightweight. Like zero W20 motor oil is probably borderline too thick. Like ATF is really good, stuff like that. But I'm literally just gonna put maybe a drop on there and then that's gonna be it. If you put too much, dirt's gonna get in there, it's gonna cause the problem we were having. And these are meant to be kind of ran, mostly dry to begin with, just a, with a little bit of oil, but definitely not grease. Most definitely do not put grease. So I'm in the process of putting it on, but I just want to take a moment to admire this setup that they installed on here. It's amazing. Uh, I'm sure some people know what this is and some people don't. This is a piece that allows you to take just a normal rope, well, cord, tie a knot in it, put it right here, wrap it around, and you can pull start it that way. So if your pull start was bad and you need to run it, you could use this. And the fact that these are screws and not rivets because if you were to look over here it's a very very similar design just a smaller uh, you know two horsepower less and yet this one you can just take it off without having to take the whole thing off it's kind of amazing so i just kind of want to point that out i wish all of them were like this okay moment of truth we'll go back let's find out We'll bind, who knows? No, I think that little cover is kind of rubby on the end, but to be honest, that's gonna self clear. At least that's what we're gonna say. Getting over a cold. So if I sound weird periodically, no, that's the reason why. I am told it's because I wear shorts when it's freezing outside, but what do they know? Ooh. Well, we're gonna need a new one of those. Uh, I mean, oh. We're not even gonna keep it. Uh. I don't remember which way choke is. Oh, it is on choke. Okay. Let's plug it in. Um, let's make sure nothing's engaged. Nope. How this works is there's a belt that's on a pulley on the shaft, and there's a corresponding pulley for the, I don't know, impeller? Would it be considered impeller? Let's say impeller. And I need something that will go boom, 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 help, boom, help. Oh, right there. That should go boom. Um. This switch is set to on. Oh, 
There goes that clutch thing I was telling you about. Maybe that's not choke off. Maybe we have different problems. I'm gonna remove the spark plug and then we'll put some directly down the plug hole. Plug is removed. It's not the prettiest, but I did just check for spark and there is spark. I'm sorry, I didn't really show you. Well, hopefully not all that audio was buried in my jacket, but who knows? If it was, I'm just gonna apologize right now. success so we need to take off that carb you know what we're just gonna put a little fuel down there and see what happens see if it's leaking just a little bit it's a few ounces So based on when we pulled everything over, the choke was off. So I'm gonna put the choke on. I'm gonna give it a moment to kind of fill the bowl. I mean, I'm put a huge amount of fuel in there. I see it on the bottom, so it should be at least dripping down into the bowl. Let's give it a pull. Off choke. My biggest problem with these machines is the fact that they are heavy, which isn't a bad thing, but when you're fixing them and you're having to pull them over repeatedly, it can get a little tiring. I'm sure I'm going to have to clean the card, but you never know. We might get lucky. Mm -mm. No luck at all. So you're going to have to forgive me. I took out the 3 8 that was here, and it just came with like a little rod that holds us in place. Couldn't really see a whole lot to begin with, but here we go. This should just come right off, along with all the crap that was shoved back there, including the kill wire. That's nice. Uh, well, the throttle isn't exactly the most free thing in the world, but, well, that's what happens. This one's a real struggle to get removed. You're gonna have to take some quick notes. You have to remove the fuel line, which I've already done. And there's a screw here, which releases that air intake. And there's a screw there. And from there forward, it's, it's pretty difficult. You're gonna to have to, like I said, take some pretty detailed notes or watch this a few times. You can watch this a few times anyway. Whew. Oh boy, there we go. Look at that. Now, the throttle is connected, and then boom. I don't know if I ripped that gasket. I probably did. Oh well, it's old. It probably needs to be replaced anyway. So now that we have that done, 
we'll just go ahead and disassemble the carb because this is a little bit different than others and then we will get it cleaned working good looking good and uh be ready to go the majority of these are older because well it's old style and they've never really been worked on i'm assuming so what you're gonna have to do is this grab a half inch and we are going to remove this bottom jet well, it's not a half inch is it a three eighths nope probably a seven sixteenths the one that i did not grab okay there we go now inside here that screws into a, like packing it's a special order of like a oh ring oh my god that's not good oh yep that um that's not good at all The reason why that's not good is there's a jet in there. So we are going to probably want to take a little bit of compressed air and boil that out. Then we'll take a little WD-40, let that simmer in place. I was really hoping to save this carb, but I don't know. I do not know. I don't think that's actually working. No, it's not. This is completely frozen in place. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's a few days later. And the reason why it's a few days later is the carb that we were looking at earlier, technically a jet. This is a new one, by the way. Down here that we were trying to remove goes all the way through. And you can't really remove this top piece without removing it. Now you can, don't get me wrong. There's people out there that can force it, but I don't really like doing that. I tried cleaning the corrosion out and it just wasn't happening. Then I thought to myself, well, I'm gonna have to, at the bare minimum, get a carb kit because I don't have one for whatever reason. I thought I did. I might as well, if I'm gonna be going down the road of waiting for the mail through a winter storm, I'm just going to go ahead and get a new carb. So I bought an aftermarket carb and good to go. I was thinking about putting a different carb on there. It came off at 10 which doesn't really matter they're the same carb more or less except you just have to tune it down but if i remember that one was leaking so not the best of ideas so i think we'll put you down and we'll see if it works uh let's take that out i think that's a choke fuel should be on It shakes a lot, but it runs. Now, I don't know if you can catch it, but it was rich, which means I need to turn the adjustment screw in to lean it out. How can you tell? Because it's pumping out uh, dark smoke. Semi-dark, I can still kind of see it in the garage. I'm going to get this bad boy off of the table though, and we will tune it up a little bit and get this thing out of the garage this is a different carb but with everything on it it's kind of hard to see uh, this connect or excuse me this connection but basically this is the main it goes in leans it out loosens it to rich it up this is for idle 
This machine doesn't really go to idle, but in order to check that, you can just manually put your finger down. Usually it's gonna be hovering like right about here. Push it all the way down. And then you can make your necessary adjustments. This one's real hard with the air filter on, which is the way you should be tuning these. So it's a little interesting, but this is a different carb obviously, but it's just the same exact thing. I'm gonna go ahead, get it turned on, and we'll uh, get this thing running smooth. And to get it tuned, we need a flathead. So let's get it turned on. On. idle to me is running a little high so I'm just gonna adjust that I'm gonna do a couple other things get this cleaned up and whatnot but other than that everything looks like it's good to go the on off switch is a little crunchy sometimes you just need to move it back and forth um, but if not the owner I'll tell them and if they want me to replace it I will but you can kill it by putting it back to choke um, so keep that in mind but other than that we should be good to go unfortunately we didn't get to clean the carb but in this scenario it just makes sense to clean uh, to buy a new one I didn't have a filter I didn't have a carb kit and uh, I think it was $22 for the air filter fuel line of course which I threw away and the carb so air filter alone is like 10 or 11 dollars and the carb kit was like eight so it was like four dollars more three dollars more just to get the whole thing so i did it's not the greatest of quality i'm not gonna lie but these are super simple carbs you really have to try to mess them up i know aftermarket can definitely seem like it does that but they're pretty pretty easy and they're pretty pretty good to buy aftermarket well Hopefully this helps someone. If it did, leave a thumbs up. Definitely subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at smallengine101. And we'll catch you on the next video. You have a good day. Okay, I do have to show you this. I did a little bit more fine tuning. I didn't let it warm up enough when I was doing the previous video. So I let it warm up and I tuned it a little, little bit better. Lower the idle. But that's not what I want to show you. Check this out. Uh oh. Broom's in the way. Told you, if anyone has ever owned an old Ford, will tell you that trick will save you a whole lot of time and a whole lot of effort. Okay, I'll see you later.